Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, very dismal, dreary Saturday. So dismal that this cat has been attached to me to the hip, but the hip all day today. So he saw that I was starting the video. He just literally came running up. And by the way, so I've got, I know everybody's favorite blue pat flannel shirt with the red flannel jacket. Okay, so it's flannel over flannel. It's, it's very fashionable. If it's not, it's going to be. And I have a red flannel shirt that you've seen me in with a jacket identical to this, only in blue. So next time, if we get another one of these cold, dismal days, I'll flip the I'll flip them uh, and do the reverse. Now we've got uh, the rain moving away from southern New Jersey and southeastern Pennsylvania. It's all done across Maryland, Delaware. And Virginia, which is where it was, you know, all overnight, and and then started shifting northward, and now uh, that back edge uh, going into this evening is in uh, central New Jersey, and we're having uh, moderate to heavy rain now across Long Island, northern New Jersey, the Hudson Valley, and much of Connecticut, except the extreme east where it's about to get into, and there's also uh, some showers coming down around the Great Lakes. With the upper air system that's driving all of this and this big pattern change that that is taking place and you can see it on the satellite view and i'll go back down to where i usually sit and uh, here's your new uh, coastal storm that was off the new england coast for the last couple of days finally starting to accelerate away to the east and it's moving at a very good clip so you can understand now what's happened with this blocking pattern breaking down uh, everything is starting to uh, be, is able to move along at a more normal pace uh, in the atmosphere and everything is starting to move along from west to east rather than being bottlenecked so uh, we're seeing this system here in the east actually progress through a bit faster so i think the rains may actually come to an end a little bit faster although the volume of rain has been um about as forecast uh, much this is off the radar i got to look at the individual amounts now i'm going to tell you right off the bat it's a little deceptive here uh, with the uh, Mount Holly, the Doppler radar, uh, I'm not sure. I got to ask uh, them because it just seems a little off, and I'll tell you why. Uh, the main uh, problem for me is that it has the green areas on the Doppler are supposedly an inch of liquid or more uh, over through central Long Island, and that has definitely not been the case yet. I mean, maybe we've gotten about a, uh, a half an inch uh, where I am, and um, some three quarters of an inch to an inch amount amounts around uh, New York City so far. I, I'm just doubting this area up in northern New Jersey where it's showing two and a half inches plus, but I want to double check. This area I know did happen, so it is definitely more accurate uh, for central and south Jersey uh, because there was every bit of two and a half inches with local two to three inches with local flooding along the uh, New Jersey counties. Now, for some reason, the New York Doppler radar looks actually like it makes more sense to me uh, in terms of what's fallen. So the darker greens would be um, an inch and a half, and then you have the slightly lighter shading of one inch rains. And you can see on the green here, the first green level is half an inch or more. So I'm kind of more in this blue area, which is for a third of an inch. So I'm about a third to a half. And so it's been a half an inch or more, but remember, the areas to the north, the, the northeast, are going to be playing catch up now uh, as the rain is coming in. At this point, uh, this is the rain that was earlier down uh, in southern New Jersey. Now, with respect to severe weather, uh, we're looking at no severe weather here in the northeast because of the fact that uh, this is all basically overrunning. Uh, but there's some marginal risk of severe weather in the southeastern part of the U.S., specifically southeastern Georgia and southwestern South Carolina and northern Florida, and we have some. Uh, strong to possible severe thunderstorms going on there this evening. Also, a marginal risk up uh, in the northern plains of the western Dakotas and eastern Montana, and a general risk of thunderstorms that snakes its way up from the plains through the northern Rockies and on up through in the Pacific Northwest. So let's show you what's going on <clears throat> model-wise. First, we'll start in the east. Now, we're going to be going into this... Um, new pattern so let, let me let me just show you what's happening in the upper air and here we go so notice the and 
I could actually go back. So we can go backwards now, back to Wednesday. So this is at the point where the block is still uh, very much in place. And you can see it right here, this big blocking high. You've got these bottlenecked uh, weather systems uh, just uh, sitting there waiting for something to happen, waiting for something to move. And the first catalyst was the fact that the high was breaking down and that this Azores low was finally moving away to the northeast. So once that started happening on Wednesday, we began to see the changes. And here you can see the um, Azores low is gone. Uh, we are getting low pressure now forming near Iceland as opposed to high pressure. And the block in eastern <clears throat> that is migrated to eastern Canada disappears completely. So that just allows everything in the atmosphere to move along at its normal west to east, normal traffic speed. And that means change. So we're not going to be locked up in the same air mass for days and days. Now, once this pulls out on Monday and Tuesday, where temperatures will actually go back to seasonal, you got to remember this time of year, just to get the sun, if the sun comes out, it goes over 70 automatically. That's a given. But notice that what happens is that in the west, we get a deep trough that forms. So in response to that, and the fact that we have no block, means that a ridge builds in the eastern part of the United States. And that means our air comes from the southwest. Canada is cut off. The cold air is way to the north. So we are going to warm up significantly as we go through this week and into next weekend. And as we look at the longer term pattern, you know, that ridge in the east is going to be around in one form or another for quite a while, uh, at, at least into the early part of the week of May 22nd. So it starts to disappear a little bit, but it's still there even when we go through that entire week going into the Memorial Day weekend. So uh, I, I think that as long as we don't have any kind of blocking pattern setting up like we, what we just saw, we're going to see warmer than, than average temperatures. And in fact, <clears throat> uh, in case uh, you, I, you haven't seen this illustrated before, I'm going to just go back to, um, let's move along here. So we're going to go into this coming week. And I want to go to Thursday because that's the day. Well, here's Wednesday. I think Wednesday. Um, shows it pretty well. So you look at the temperature profile Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. and you can see 80s up uh, into New England, uh, 90s starting to show up in uh, the mid-Atlantic states and down through much of the southeast. And then look out in the west where you've got 40s uh, for high temperatures across much of the west. So that's your uh, temperature profile. So now I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, draw the upper air just based on um, this temperature profile that you see and you know that would tell me that there's a, a trough there in the west and a ridge here in the east so it would look something like that okay now I'm going to switch so you remember this shape because it's going to disappear now and I'm going to switch off to uh, the upper air that we just had and this is exactly what it's showing you got this trough in the west and this ridge in the east. So that's how the surface temperatures match up to what the upper air does. So this is why we look, among other reasons, this is why we look at the jet stream. And you can actually, just with the temperature map, pretty much figure out, uh, in general, what's going on uh, in terms of what the jet stream structure is. So it, you don't always, you know, if by just some chance, you, that's the only map you could find. Uh, is a map of temperatures in the United States. You can just kind of look at how the, the the profile is, where there's all the cold air, relatively speaking, where all the warm air is, and you can figure it all out. But this is going to be the general view going forward. So um, we will uh, now look at the specific surface map for the east, and then I'll take you through um, the west to see what's happening. So here we go uh, in the east. So basically, as we move through the early part of the week. Here's our low from tonight, which pulls away, uh, kind of takes a little bit of a break on Monday as it uh, from uh, traveling as it sits uh, in the Gulf of Maine for a day. And that's going to make it pretty windy here Sunday night and Monday uh, in the Northeast. And by the way, tomorrow night is Derek Jeter night and uh, at Yankee Stadium for Yankee fans. And <clears throat> there may be some showers late tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening on the back side. You can see the GFS shows us pretty well. So uh, I don't know if there probably won't be 
um, thunderstorms, but there certainly could be uh, some showers uh, and uh, maybe a, a, a brief heavier downpour. Now, it will dry out on Monday, but it will be windy. But gradually, that next high is off the South Atlantic coast. We start to set up the west-southwest flow, uh, and that brings in the very warm air for Thursday. In fact, the, the isobars here are pretty much uh, almost westerly. So if we've got a west wind, that, and um, there's a little bit of a gradient there too, so that might actually keep the sea breeze at bay except right along the immediate beaches. And then it looks like a weak weather front comes through Thursday night, turns a little cool, turns a bit cooler on uh, Friday into Saturday, a bit of a, a high goes by to the north, so we get some cooler air coming down from New England. That should bring temperatures back down to uh, still above average, but instead of being 15 degrees above average, maybe it'll only be like 3 to 6 or 4 to 8 degrees above average. And then the high moves out. Uh, we'll start to get fronts trying to come through, but you know it doesn't really look like a, um, anything all that impressive. And in general, it's going to be uh, on the warm side of average, uh, maybe pretty much through the rest of the month, uh, in the way it looks. Now, let's look at the west. And we'll see what you folks out west have to look forward to, because with a deep trough in the west, that means action. And we've got uh, some rain and snow across the northwest and the northern Rockies tonight into Sunday morning. And a bit of a break with another weather system that follows. Uh, actually fairly significant in terms of rain and snow here uh, for Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, that, uh, that's, that's cold air that's up out in the west with that deep trough. So you're going to see snow levels drop. Um, significantly, uh, even down into central uh, California showing it. And then snow translates uh, into the northern and even parts of uh, the uh, of western Colorado looks like it gets into some snow here uh, on uh, Wednesday night into Thursday. That's my dog Cody, by the way, you're hearing in the background. And then that system pulls out. And again, with the pattern kind of starts to relax a little bit toward the second half of the month somewhat. Um, but you still have these weather systems coming in uh, to the west producing rain, particularly in the northwest and in the northern Rockies um, as we uh, move through uh, the end of the month and get through into the Memorial Day weekend, assuming that, you know, the model is right, which I'm sure after, you know, after day seven or eight, it does tend to get a bit squirrely. And by the way, here's our western satellite view today, and you can take a look, and you can see clouds are sweeping in uh, off the Pacific uh, into the Pacific Northwest and on up into the northern Rockies, although it remains mostly dry uh, in through uh, the southwest into California. As uh, In fact, look at the plains. It's nice and dry from North Dakota all the way down uh, into Texas. So uh, a bit of a break for them um, with uh, the system that just came out of the southern plains um, over the last couple of days. So I'm watching the rain out here that uh, continues. Uh, and we'll watch it uh, uh, go on for a while longer. I think everybody's going to wind up. I was kind of looking on the order of, you know, one to two, one to three inches of rain for most places. And, you know, that seems to be bearing out uh, in terms of what we've seen falling, have fallen so far and what is yet to fall for areas uh, that are um, still doing it across the northern half of New Jersey, uh, northeastward through Long Island, the Hudson Valley and through southern New England. The website posts on uh, the website, which is a good place to have a meteorologist Joe Chaffee, Angry Ben on nycweathernow.com uh, for the New York City perspective. New York City might see its first 90 degree readings this week on Thursday. Um, Long Island uh, depends on that west wind. I think we'll see 80 or better. I don't know if we'll see, uh, I don't think we'll see 90, but we certainly could see temperatures reach into the 80s away from the ocean. And you can get the Long Island perspective on uh, weatherlongisland.com, which is another one of my websites. And uh, you can download my app and subscribe to my forecast, which is just 99 cents a month. And they're available for New York City, Long Island, New Jersey, Hudson Valley, uh, and um, Eastern Pennsylvania and Connecticut. And finally, thank you for being on my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like my videos. <clears throat> the uh, YouTube videos are free. And by the way, I posted a video of the cat all by himself uh, earlier today. If you uh, haven't seen it, uh, go ahead and take a look. It's uh, very short. It's not a 14-minute cat video. I think it's just a little over a minute. But you can see my cat in action today. Uh, he was very, very active. All right, have a great day and a great rest of your weekend and a happy Mother's Day.